Uh, hi guys, today I'm going to cover uh, a few topics that I have not been able to cover in the class in detail. So I'm going to cover it today. It's basically chapter number 9 in your book. It's, uh, it's about farms in a competitive market. So this is chapter 9. Farms in competitive market. Before we start our discussion, uh, we need to know what competitive market means. Competitive market has got a couple of uh, characteristics, and you need to know those characteristics. And those characteristics define uh, a competitive market. So, <coughs> in a competitive market, the char characteristics uh, that we have are the first one is there are, there are many buyers and many sellers. Many buyers and many sellers. Number two is all all the sellers in the market they sell similar products, if not exactly the same products. Okay, so everyone, every seller in the market, they're they're producing very very similar products. An example of that could be a fish market. So we have similar product the third uh, the third characteristic is that everyone in this market the buyer and the seller everyone is a price taker everyone is a price taker what do we mean by what do we mean by price taker it basically means that Neither the seller nor the buyer can actually ha can can actually affect the market price. There are so many sellers in the market that if one producer, if one seller wants to increase its production, it doesn't really have any impact on the price of that room. So everyone is a price taker. They take the price from the market. The buyer takes the price from the market. The seller takes the price from the market. They cannot change. Uh, they can uh, one individual seller or individual buyer cannot really change the price in the market. So that's the third characteristic. Fourth characteristic is that the barrier entry is pretty low. Barrier, barrier to entry or barrier is low. Basically means that the transaction cost in the, in the market, if you want to enter the market, it's, it's, it's free. If you want to exit the market, it's free. There's not really any transaction cost here, so the transaction cost you can think of this as very neg is negligible or it's just zero. Okay, so if you want to go out of the market, you can just go out of the market. You don't have to pay anything. If you want to come into the market, if you want to uh, sell something in the market, you don't have to pay anything. It's it's totally free. Okay, that's what we mean. That's what we mean by barrier is low. So th these four characteristics define a competitive market, and. Uh, if you, if you remember from our last week's discussion section, we we we, we effectively showed that profit maximize the profit maximizing rule. Profit maximizing rule is margin revenue equals to marginal cost. That means The quantity at which marginal revenue equals marginal cost is the optimal quantity, or that maximizes your profit. That quantity maximizes your profit. So that's the optimal quantity that a producer choose. So the producer choose the amount of output uh, that he or she wants to produce on the basis of this rule. Now, output where marginal revenue equals marginal cost is what the producer should produce to maximize his or her profit. So that's the profit maximizing rule. We solved a numerical numerical example of this in the last discussion section, so I'm not going to go, go over that again. Just uh, reminding you that this is a profit maximizing rule. And uh, the thing is, in the market, not every firm can actually make profits, right? Sometimes they make losses. The question is, when they make losses, what do they do? They have two options in their hand. Either they continue their production, or they just get shut down temporarily. So these two options are short-run decision making. Okay, so we're talking about short-run decisions. 
Torquan positions. So either you continue your operation or you just go out of the market. The question is when when do they take those decisions? When they when do they take the first decision to go out of the market uh, to, to continue uh, the production? Or when do they take the decision of going out of the market? And we are going to analyze them today. So before we analyze that, I just want to remind you that total cost, total cost equals total fixed cost, total fixed cost plus total variable cost, total variable cost. This implies that average total cost, ATC, equals average variable cost, sorry, average fixed cost plus average variable cost, pretty obvious from that, pretty obvious from the first equation. Uh, so what is the average variable cost? It's uh, the total variable cost. Average variable cost equals the total variable cost divided by the total amount of production. And uh, average fixed cost, it's just total fixed cost. This should be total variable cost here. Total fixed cost divided by the total amount of production here. Now, you might be wondering what's the difference between average variable cost and marginal cost. Let me give you a very simple example to illustrate the difference between uh, average variable cost and marginal cost. Suppose that you, you are a shard producer, you produce shards, and you have 10 workers, 10 workers, and 10 workers produce 100 shards. And you have to pay salary, you have to pay wages to these workers. Suppose that you pay wage, a total salary of $100 to these 10 workers. This, this $100 here is your total, vari total variable cost. Total variable cost. Okay? So, how do you define variable cost? Variable cost is basically both that cost. Uh, which varies with the amount of output you're producing. So if you want to produce more shirts, you hire more workers, you pay higher salaries, more salaries, total amount of salary increases that you're paying, so that's a variable cost. And it, the fixed cost is a, is, a, is a cost which doesn't change over time, okay? Or it's, I, should, I should be more careful, which doesn't really change uh, when you increase your output. Your, your output increases, but the fixed cost remains constant. So it's an example of that is a rent that you pay for the land you're using. Okay, even if you're not producing anything, you have to you have to pay the rent in the short term. You have to pay the rent for the uh, rent of the land that you're using for your business. Therefore, even if you're producing 50 goods, you're still paying the same amount of rent. If you're producing 100 outputs, still pay, paying the same amount of rent. So this doesn't really vary with your output, and therefore, this is fixed cost. But salary here is a variable cost because if you produce more output, then you need more high, uh, You need to hire more workers, and you have to pay higher salaries in total, and that's your variable cost. Uh, what about what about uh, the marginal cost, uh, average variable cost? So in this particular case, your average variable cost equals total variable cost divided by quantity, that is equal to $100, divided by 10, which is basically $10 per worker. That's your average variable cost. Now suppose that you want to increase your production, and that's why you need to hire one more worker. So you hire the, the 11th worker, you hire the 11th worker, and your production increases to 108 shirts, okay? 108 shirts. You hire the 11th worker and your production increases to 108 shirts. And 
you also have to pay salary to the 11th worker. You have to pay a salary to the 11th worker. That's why the total wages that you're paying now rises to the new wages, new total wages. It rises to, uh, suppose, hundred and hundred and five dollars. Okay. So what's the marginal cost here? What's the marginal cost of producing? Well, let's uh, let's uh, just let's just say that we have hundred shares. So you have you, you have eleventh worker, and your your production increases to hundred and one shares. So this is a simpler example. This is a simpler example. So your new total wages rises to hundred and five dollars. Therefore. To produce that extra shirt, the hundred and one shirt, you have to spend five extra dollars, right? Just hundred and five minus hundred, that's five dollars. Therefore, your marginal cost here is five dollars. Okay? But compare compare this marginal cost to your average cost here. The average cost was ten dollars per worker, but your marginal cost is five dollars per output. Okay, to produce the extra output, you have to spend an extra five dollars, and the average variable cost is total variable cost divided by ten, which is just ten workers. Okay, so that's that's the difference between average variable cost and marginal cost. If you understand that, we can move on to our analysis of short-term decision making. So we need to draw a graph here. We have price and cost on the vertical axis. We have the first output here. Let's call it QF. Now our average total cost is a U-shaped curve. Average total cost. And we know that average total cost equals average fixed cost plus average variable cost. And quite naturally, average total cost has to be higher than average variable cost. And therefore, average variable cost will lie under the average total cost curve. And it's also a U-shaped curve. So we have our average variable cost curve, which lies under average total cost, because average total cost is lower than average, average, total, average variable cost is lower than average total cost. Now, here's the tricky part. We have to draw uh, a marginal cost curve. A marginal cost curve, it looks like this. Okay, that's how, mar that's how a marginal cost look a curve looks like. It is high, uh, first it's decreasing, then it comes to a minimum point, then it starts increasing. Now, if you, if you, look, at, if you look carefully at these two graphs, you'd see that the marginal cost curve cuts through both the average total cost and the average variable cost at their minimum points, okay? So this point, this is the minimum point of the average total cost curve, and the marginal cost curve cuts through this minimum point. Also, the marginal cost curve cuts through the minimum point of the average variable cost, okay? I'm not really going into any, any further detail why is that true. If you want to uh, know why that's true, maybe you should you should read chapter you should read up chapter eight. Uh, but the point that you need to know from here is that marginal cost curve always cuts through the minimum point of both the average total cost and the, and the average variable cost curves. Okay, so we are we're done with drawing these. In a perfectly competitive market structure, we have we always have this marginal revenue equals price. This is always true in a in a competitive in a particular competitive market structure. Okay? The marginal revenue is always equal to the price that you're charging your customers. Now suppose that your margin revenue or the price that you're charging your customers is is here. Let's call this one P1. Let me just cons be consistent with my graphs here. Okay. P1. So 
This is our margin revenue curve, MR1. And the margin revenue curve, it cuts the margin cost curve at this point. So at this point, margin revenue equals marginal cost. So this point gives us uh, the profit maximizing quantity. Let's call it Q1. Okay. That's our optimal quantity. At this particular point, marginal cost equals margin revenue. And also marginal revenue, margin revenue equals average total cost at this point because this point is on the average total cost curve. So margin revenue at that particular point, margin revenue, margin revenue equals marginal cost equals average total cost. And we can just for for the current analysis we can forget this. Okay, we can just claim that margin revenue equals average total cost here. This is true here. Now, let's take one more point, one more price. Uh, suppose our margin revenue is here. M of 2 equals P2. This is our price. So here, at this point, what you see is margin revenue equals price equals marginal cost equals average variable cost. But, uh, wait, the profit maximum quantity is Q2, just to be more complete. But at this point, when you're producing Q2 amount of goods, your average variable cost is here, your marginal cost is also here, marginal revenue is also here, but the average total cost of producing Q2 is here. Is here. So let's call it, so this is our... Uh, average total cost ATC2 okay so what we see is that at this output level Q2 your average total cost is actually greater than the price that you're charging the average total cost is actually greater than the price that you're charging therefore you're making a making a loss here because average the cost that you're incurring to produce the average cost that you're incurring to produce Q2 amount of goods is lower than the price that you're charging, right? So you're making a loss here. The question is, when you're making a loss like this, where you can just barely, just barely cover your average variable cost, should you stay? In, should should you actually stay in the market, or you shouldn't stay in the market? The decision rule is that in the short run, when you can cover your average variable cost, you stay in the market. Okay, so that's the first one. What about a price in between P1 and P2, okay? A price in between P1 and P2. Suppose that we take this price, let's call it P3 equals MR3. So at this price, we have a profit maximizing quantity here. Let's call this one Q3. So to produce Q3, to produce Q3, the marginal cost is here, the, uh, and the marginal revenue is also here. But what about the average? What about the variable cost here? The variable cost, average variable cost, is here. Okay. So that's our average variable cost. So what you can see here is that your average variable cost is here, and the marginal revenue or the price that you're charging to customers is here. So you are charging more, you're charging more than the average variable cost. So you can actually cover your average variable cost by, uh, by the price that you're charging to customers. And because your price is greater than the average variable cost, even after covering your whole average variable cost, you can actually cover a, bit, a portion of your total fixed cost as well. Because you can do that, any price between P1 and P2 here, where your price is at least as big as the average variable cost. The decision for you to is, is, to, uh, is to continue operation, although you're making a loss here, because definitely at this uh, output level, your total cost, the average total cost is somewhere here, is somewhere here, so which is definitely bigger than the average, uh, the, uh, the margin revenue, the price that you're uh, charging to your customer. So you're making a loss anyway. But you're covering your a portion of a fixed cost and the whole average variable cost. Therefore, in this region, you continue business.